okay, maybe you are wondering why are there two partners here, but actually we are from different branches in Malaysia. I'm from JB branch and Patricia is from Penang. So Patricia, I just want to check with you, if I'm a purchaser interested in investing in Malaysia, what are the types of properties that is available? Okay, um, basically there are two types. Um, it's uh, either under master title or um, individual strata title. Um, what is master title? Master title basically means um, it's not subdivided yet. So it's under the name. Uh, the it, it's still under the name of the proprietor. So um, the red uh, the registered owner will either be the developer or uh, another proprietor who gives the right to the developer to develop um, a stratified property. And um, so when you purchase um, the property, the unit, you are only a beneficial owner until the title uh, the title has been subdivided. So. Um, a strata title is where it has been subdivided and it will be transferred to the name of the individual purchasers. So for each unit, you will have um, a separate title issued for every single unit. Okay. Okay, I know that if I want to buy a property, if it's strata title property, um, sometimes it may take quite a while for the strata title to be issued. Is it, is it common in Malaysia? Yeah, this has been quite, um, this has been bugging quite a few, um, a lot of um, um, property purchasers who uh, purchase stratified properties because it used to be, um, it, it would take a long time for the stratified title to come in. And um, even until today, uh, there are properties in Malaysia which has not been um, transferred to the individual uh, buyers. It's still under the name of the developer or the proprietor. Um, but um, in 2015, our government uh, came up with this new act, um, Housing Development Control and Licensing Amendment Regulations, where um, it actually um, imposed um, um, a re responsibility on the developer to hand over you need together with the strata title to the purchases. Yeah. Okay. So hopefully with this, um, that, that issue can be resolved in future. Okay. So what are the types of lands that are available in Malaysia? Yeah. Um, there are two types of land, um, freehold and leasehold. So for freehold land, it's um, you are the owner in perpetuity. So it belongs to the owner until you dispose it all. And usually with um, a freehold land title, you will not need the state authority, the state government's approval for any transactions like um, disposing it off or to lease or tenant it out or um, to, to create charges over your, your property. And then for leasehold land, it is um, held under lease for a maximum tenure of 99 years. And then it belongs to the state. And um, it's usually subjected to restriction in interest, meaning when you want to sell it, you need to go back to the state government to get approval, or you want to charge it to the bank, you need to go to the state as well. So it's more restrictive in nature. Okay, so if I want to purchase from a developer and an, or an individual, what are the differences in these circumstances? Okay, we call it a direct purchase from developer or a sub-sale. So the difference is um, in Malaysia, for direct purchase from developer, there is a prescribed form, um, a format which you have to follow, um, the terms and conditions which you have to follow strictly. Um, and developers cannot vary the terms unless they go back to the Commission of Buildings to get approvals. So the buyers are very protected in, in, in these terms. Um, and um, there are actually two um, schedules, which uh, we call it the Schedule G and Schedule H. So Schedule G is for landed properties and Schedule H is for stratified uh, properties. So it has um, 
the prescribed form has uh, certain salient terms which you have to follow, which includes um, you need to deliver vacant possession within 24 months from the date of the contract for, um, for Schedule G, and then 36 months you need to deliver the unit um, for Schedule H. And if you fail, if the developer fails to um, deliver vacant possession, it will result in um, liquidated damages payable by the developer, which is 10% of the purchase price until they deliver the key to the purchaser. Okay, and also a certificate of completion and compliance must be issued when you when they hand over the keys. Okay, um, as for sub seal, it's really a willing buyer, willing seller. Um, situation where you um, the parties are freely um, they, they can freely ne negotiate on the terms they want and there's no prescribed form so it's basically depends on how you negotiate the purchase okay if Patricia if I'm a foreigner which I believe most of the people are foreigners here so what are the restrictions applicable to foreigners if I want to buy a property in Malaysia? Okay, under the National Land Code, foreigners, uh, foreign individuals and foreign companies, um, you will need to get a state government consent if you want to purchase a property in Malaysia. And because um, land is a state matter and each state, each land office of the state will have different roles and regulations and bylaws uh, to govern um, acquisition of property by foreigners. And um, this includes uh, imposing levies, application fees, and it varies in different states. Yeah. Okay, the main thing I think they will, most people will be interested to know which is how do they implement for each state. Maybe I'll just expand a bit on the Johor state. Actually, for Johor state, the threshold is must be 1 million and above. and there's a levy of 2% or 20,000, whichever is higher when the approval is obtained. Patricia, for pinning, what, what are the threshold like? Okay. Is it the same? Um, the threshold, the, min the, the minimum uh, threshold for purchasing a per property in Penang. Uh, if you're familiar with Penang, Penang has an island and mainland, so it's different. For mainland um, stratified properties, it's 1 million and same goes to landed properties. But in the island, for landed properties, the minimum threshold is three million and one million for stratified properties. Okay. All right, um, now the question is, um, what happens after the, de the developer hands over the key? Yeah, what happens to the management of the strata pro uh, stratified property? Okay, once the purchaser gets the key, usually there would be a joint management body which will be established. And there is a developer's duty to convene the first AGM and within 12 months of delivery of vacant possession. Okay. After that, a body corporate called the management corporation will come into existence, but that is only when the strata title has been issued. And uh, if the strata title has been registered, like at least a quarter of the share units have been registered, then the developer calls for the first AGM of the management corporation. Well, actually now the GAMB and the management corporation are all regulated under an act, which is the Strata Management Act 2013. In this act, there are some bylaws which everyone has to adhere, right? Um, okay, um, just a little bit information here. Some some of you might ask, okay, what can um, it, does the management corporation has the power to utilize the maintenance accounts funds or the second funds um, for maybe putting up Wi-Fi in the property or uh, maybe having a, a, um, hold um, a dinner appreciation dinner for the management committee or uh, putting up some equipment for the gym. So um, basically, yeah, thi this is actually, this few examples are rather in the gray area, which if you look at the list that you can um, 
how you can actually utilize the, uh, the maintenance accounts money and the sinking funds accounts money. Um, okay, let's go through the list. Um, for maintenance account, it can be used for maintaining the comp uh, common property, paying for the expenses incurred for cleaning, security, um, amenities, and then paying any premiums for insurance, and then complying with any notice or order given, and then minor painting work on the common property, and then carrying out inspection of electrical wiring systems of the common property, carrying out inspection, maintenance, and repair of the main water tanks, paying rents and rates, paying any fee incurred for auditing of accounts, and then paying all charges reasonably incurred for the administration of accounts, paying of remuneration, uh, fees for the managing agent, and paying for allowances or other expenses of the members of the joint management body, and then meeting other expenses of general or regulated um, regular nature relating to the maintenance and management of the building, and paying any expenses, costs, expenditure in relation to the procurement of the services. If you look at this list, you feel like the, I, I don't think it feel under it, it, it goes under any one of this. Okay, so if it doesn't, then we look further into the sinking funds account. Okay, this um, the uh, what you can actually use for painting, repainting of the common property, acquire movable property, and then renewal or replacement of fi fixtures and furnitures, upgrading and refurbishment of the common property, and other capital expenditure. So maybe it might fall under here, let's say upgrading and renewal of um, fixtures and fittings. Maybe the, the gym equipment will fall under here and the Wi-Fi. But the di appreciation dinner, I don't see it falls under any of those. So it, um, in case you're sitting in the management committee, you need to be very careful to decide what, what the money can be used for, because um, other than this list of um, things that you can use the money for, it, it's got, um, the money utilized for other purposes will be illegal. And the committee actually needs to reinstate the money. Yeah, and there are fines which uh, couple with the, the, the breaches. Okay, I think most people would be quite interested to know if I have a complaint, what, where, where do I go if I bought the strata titled property? So we have this strata management tribunal, right? So this is under the strata management act as well. So they will listen to your disputes and complaints. Okay, so these are the members shall be appointed by the minister or these people. And then uh, the award is deemed to be an order of court can, and can be enforced accordingly. So it's uh, actually quite a friendly setting because they are, you don't need a lawyer actually at the hearing unless the matter is uh, it's very complex issues. Okay, so they can actually hear claims up to 250000 for the following matters, right? For disputes on functions and all this. Okay. So, okay. You want to take on this? Um, I think many of you might be an um, investors uh, who who wish to actually invest in a property in Malaysia. And maybe you will be wondering, oh, can I rent it out via um, Airbnb? Um, as far as I understand, I think Singapore is a no, but in Malaysia, generally, it's it's okay, it's legal except for Penang, which um, the local council has already um, issued a ban on Airbnb. But for other states in Malaysia, uh, it's legal. But of course, you need to look back at the by, um, into the bylaws of each of the building. If the bylaws of, the, um, of, the, of your uh, stratified property says no to Airbnb or short-term listing, the leasing for uh, short-term leasing, um, then it will be a no, yeah. Then um, it will be subject to bylaws of each buildings, yeah. Okay, um, that's all of, um, of our presentation.